it's no secret that, that in the last probably two to three decades, uh, the frequency intensity of hazards, multiple types of hazards, have continued to be on the rise. Managing natural disasters, I think the key word there is, you know, you have to manage, you're never going to overcome it. The best we hope for really is to be smart about what we do every day, where we place our facilities, how our network of transportation and economics works so that we lessen the impact uh, when a disaster happens. The, the work we're doing today in helping communities, nations, federal agencies be better prepared for and respond to and recover from a disaster is making a big difference. The communities that are facing hazards today are able to recover at a much faster pace. There, there are four stages of disaster management. The first is around planning and preparedness. Uh, the second stage is response, the immediate emergency work around getting systems back up and running. Also, it leads into uh, the late stage of response, leads into the early stage of recovery. Uh, that's really when you start looking at bringing back various systems into full operation, uh, improvements to some of these systems. When a natural disaster hits, communities uh, have their first responders, and our mission is to help those communities recover. We go in and we um, assess the damage, how it's been done, and determine what opportunities there are for them to build back smarter, better, and stronger. For us to mobilize, we prepare and we're ready at a moment's notice to support the community as best we can and to support the team's overall mission, which is to help these communities come back uh, and more resilient. The uh, last and fourth stage of a disaster management is around mitigation, tying back the circle back to planning and preparedness. Uh, what are the things that you learned? What have you observed? How can you do things better and mitigate against that hazard the next time? Post-disaster environment's the best time to implement mitigation. Um, when you have widespread destruction, that also means you have widespread rebuilding. And so that's actually the best, most cost-efficient time to implement mitigation measures as you're rebuilding. Uh, the problem is that often communities are in a hurry to rebuild quickly. Power lines are down, people need power, they put them back quickly, things like hospitals. And so sometimes mitigation opportunities are missed. I think there's a lot more outreach and education to the communities about mitigation. And so hopefully over time, as risk is better understood, we just won't be as susceptible to damage. While there's money widely available to communities uh, to implement mitigation, there are some challenges to getting that money. We're constantly working with FEMA at the headquarters level and in the field to provide efficiencies and how to get the grant money to move faster to the communities. Planning and preparedness works and that mitigation works and I saw evidence of that. I would recommend community members be engaged with the planning process and determine what they should do before a disaster happens and after a disaster happens. I've responded to a number of disasters, wildfire, flood, major hurricanes, um, and it's always shocking no matter how many of disasters I've seen, um, just the amount of destruction and the impact to the community. Uh, it's, it's a very emotional response. Uh, at the end of the day, it's people helping people. We want to make sure that we uh, take our passion and our successes and help implement those across the world so that we continue to make our society more resilient for the future generations.